Hi guys, I'm Sharonda Esther Dora and welcome to Grace and Babe Reviews. And today's video will be on a TV show recap and that recap is 911. This is episode <laughs> I always forget to write down the episodes in the name of the episodes. Oh my god. So as always I'll put it. <laughs> this is episode four. Uh, the name of the episode, of course, I'll put it at the bottom of the screen. Forgive me. <laughs> Crazy. All right, so let's get into these notes. All right, so we start off the episode. We have ex-military and his son getting ready for the day. They're, like, doing the same things but separate things. Um, you know, just getting ready for the day. They're getting dressed, brushing their teeth, stuff like that. Ex-military is fine as hell. He is gorgeous. Um, but he's such a cute single dad. And being that his son has, and I did name it right uh, in my first recap, the son has a cerebral palsy. So um, he, he's a great single dad. I love it. So um, then after that, um, we pan to him, um, we pan to a scene where um, this uh, the security guard, he's like uh, working, he's on the cell phone or whatever, when he looks up on top of the building, he sees like these guys, I guess, you know, these, uh, what do you call those, uh, adventure jumpers, you know, the ones that run around jumping on buildings and doing all the flips and stuff, all that crap. So you have them, but they're on top of this roof and they're like spray painting, they're, uh, they're tagging the building or whatever on the roof part of the building. So he gets up there and he chases them all. So they get to this part where the guys, it's, it's the buildings are like close together. They're kind of like compact like that. But um, the guys are able to make it across to like this window that has a bar on it. And, and when the security guard went to go jump, I was saying to the TV, I was like, don't do it don't do it but he decided to do it anyway didn't make it and he fell in between the buildings but like i said it's like a small space but he gets stuck i thought he like fell because it was at night when he like fell between the buildings so i thought he fell and hurt himself but we pan to the next morning or the next day and maddie's at the 911 center and she gets the call of a guy that's stuck between the building and it's the security guard so what happens was when he slid through the building actually his gut his stomach actually saved him saved his fat ass from <laughs> from sliding all the way through so then we have this other scene where we have ex-military we pan back to ex-military before he goes in for the day before uh before we uh, get to the guy, you know, where Maddie gets the 911 call, um, we have ex-military who is dro dropping his son off to his grandma, his abula. They're, they're Spanish, so I thought that was so cute. And um, he's dropping uh, his son off and off to her. So we... Um, So we pan back to the um, we pan back to the building and uh, Cap and the guys uh, pull up and they go inside of the building and they, when they walk up to the building they see the guy stuck in there like like how are we gonna take care of this shit so they go on top of the building and they yell into him they ask him to reach up to see how far his hand the, the guy see how far his hand can go up so they you know maybe they can pull him up with a rope but they can't so they go back down the side athena and chim stays at the top not athena i'm sorry henrietta and chim stays at the top to keep an eye buck ex-military and cat go down and they actually in one of the uh rooms or uh yeah one of the rooms in the building or whatever they actually drill a hole which they almost drilled to his head but athena was like y'all too damn high not athena why are you saying athena but um henrietta was like y'all too high y'all need to go lower so they end up drilling a hole in the wall where the guy was actually stuck at and ex-military and cat were actually able to pull him through the hole that they created in this wall so he wouldn't fall his ass all the way down to the floor. 
I mean, you know, to the ground in between the buildings. And it was so funny because when he pulled them out, the guy was like, who knew having a gut would save my life? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. So maybe having a gut ain't such a bad thing. Um, so then we pan to Athena. She get called. She gets called inside of the captain's office. And she thought it was going to be like bad news or whatever, but it wasn't. So the captain actually says to Athena that she noticed like, you know, some years back that Athena had applied for a lieutenant position, but she kept being turned down because, of course, the ex-captain uh, was a, a sexist and an asshole, so she never got the position or whatever. So this new captain, who is, uh, who's, a, who's a woman as well, she actually, uh, and th that woman that, that's playing the captain, she looks familiar and I can't place her. I can't place her. It's going to come to me, but I can't place her. But anyway, she says that there's an opening for another lieutenant position and she wants Athena to apply. And the position actually opens up within the week. So Athena's like, oh, okay, but I need some time to think about it. She's kind of like thrown like by the offer, but she's still thrown about it. So she takes some time to think about it. Then... <laughs> This is like probably one of the funny, no, this was the funniest scene in the whole episode. So we have this, they get a call and Maddie gets a call at the 911 center and this chick ha has her head stuck in a tailpipe. Yes, you heard that right. A tailpipe, a truck. So the team, the firefighter team goes there, they go, they pull up to this bar and it looks like it's like a, a bar for like, for women and they in there tearing down, honey, they in there getting, they riding a the bull, they having their drinks and this is like in the middle of the day. I want to go where those, where those girls are at because they look like they was having some fun. So anyway, they, they go to the back. And as uh, as they're walking through, all the women was like, "Oh my God! Like they are all cute! Like talking about, <laughs> talking about all the guy firefighters or whatever." So they go through, they get to the back, and they see this girl. She's like on her knees, and her head is literally stuck in this. It's like one of those big ass revved up, chopped up uh, pickup trucks or whatever. And the guy had like this big ass tailpipe around it. Obviously the pipe is enough for you to get your stick your head in. And she did the shit on the deer or whatever. She was fucked up. She was drunk as hell. So on the deer, she stuck her head in this damn tailpipe and she got stuck. So they end up like actually sawing the tailpipe off and um and get her dumb ass out of there. They actually had to like put some like some motor oil. Like once they got it off, they couldn't like pull it off the head. They actually had to put like some motor oil on the shit and then pull it off her head. <laughs> it was so funny because as they were doing it, like Buck got hit on, ex military got hit on shit. I think they would have hit on Cap too, but Buck was like, I got a girlfriend and all this other stuff. And then when they pulled the thing off her head, she was looking at she was looking at the captain like, ugh. He is so fun. I was just like, it was, it was freaking hysterical. So that was a funny scene. So um, then we, uh, after they get the uh, the tailpipe off the woman head, ex-military get a call from the hospital. Um, it's his aunt calling, so he thinks it's his son. But when we get to the hospital, we find out that his that his grandmother. Now, remember, I told you he dropped his son off to his grandmother earlier that day. But kind of find out the grandmother, she's older or whatever. So uh, when she was going outside in the backyard uh, to get, you know, to have the little boy come back inside of, inside of the house, I guess she fell and she broke her hip. And um, the aunt was like telling him, like, you know, like she she you know the grandmother can't keep up with him as much you know as much because she's getting older and stuff like that and ex-military was telling her that he's trying but it's really hard you know the paperwork and stuff he said it's it's, it's worse than filling out paperwork for the veterans building you know veteran affairs and stuff like that so it was really really hard for him you know to uh get the paperwork through especially with him being a single dad and stuff like that and working as a firefighter emt so it was really really hard for him to get stuff done so buck is like listening to the listening to it and um 
I have wrote down like I think Buck is gonna uh, help somehow. He ends, but he he ends up helping, but we'll get to that. So um, we pan back to Athena and uh, her, her ex husband. She's home, and her ex husband is actually dropping the kids off. And they coming in with flowers and they're like, and she's like, oh, what's the flowers for? And they're like congratulating her on the position. But she tells them that she hasn't taken it yet or anything. So the ex-husband is like, why? You know, you always wanted this. You know, this is what you wanted. So she excuses the kids to their room or whatever. And she's telling the ex-husband like she wants, like she's not sure if she wants to position uh, the promotion because right now she's kind of like comfortable where she is like she's thinking about her life and stuff like that and, and pretty much what she was saying is that she was comfortable where she was you know everything is good everything is gravy like their their lives their relationship their relationship with the kids her relationship with cat you know she's just in a very comfortable position and she didn't want to do anything to um to, to to shake it up, you know what I mean? And that means taking this promotion. But he's like, he, you know, he's kind of like talking to her like, you know, like, you know, you're taking, you taking this promotion is just not about, you know, it's not always about being comfortable. Sometimes you have to take risks and stuff like that. So he's like, you know, trying to convince her to take it or whatever because she always wanted the uh, promotion or whatever. And I have wrote down like, I'm really loving this relationship between Athena and her ex. Like they're in such a comfortable position uh, right now with each other. And they really have this really comfortable um, friendly co-parenting relationship. It's just excellent and I love to see that. But that's what happens when adults handle their relationships, you know, once they end correctly co correctly lord have mercy <laughs> i did say it right that's what happens when adults you know once all the 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 bitterness and the hurt and people are truthful and honest and upfront with each other once the relationship is over they're still able to connect and and be and have a fr friendship and have the the proper work uh, working co-parenting relationship with each other because they're past the bullshit. So I love that about Athena, her husband, because he's able to just come in there and talk to her and give her advice and she doesn't feel a way about anything, you know what I mean? So I, I love that they got over that bump, they got over that hill, and now it's just smooth running for them. I, I love it. It's like they're like best friends or whatever, so I really, really love it. But that's what happens when you know, adults handle things properly and people don't lie and bullshit. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um, we pan back to ex-military and he actually takes his son, his, whose name is Christopher, to work with him. And when he gets to work, you know, he's in, up in the loft part of the fire station. I'm really trying to believe his fire stations look like the way they got this fire station hooked up on this TV show. But anyway, um, you know, he's talking and, you know, everybody's up there. And then Cat comes up and he jumps up. And he's like, you know, I have to you know, babysitting problems, bring work. And Cat is like, it's fine. You know, Buck explained what's going on as far as like babysitting or whatever. And it's fine. So they get this call. And they actually take uh, Christopher on a ride with him. It's actually with them, and it's actually um, them, like you know, doing like the jaws of life to um, to get this woman out of the car. And Cap is like explaining to Christopher like how it's done because ex-military was actually the one you know doing the jaws of life to get the woman out of the car. But it was a really, really, a really cute and heartwarming scene because you saw like everybody in the fire station like helping him out. Uh, you know, for the day with Christopher and like he went on the ride with them, you know, they were like doing things with him around the fiery house, you know, to make him very comfortable and stuff like that. It was just a really beautiful, awesome scene and I loved it. Like, and then when the aunt um, actually came to pick him up from, I forgot my earrings, I feel naked. <laughs> 
uh, when the aunt came to pick him up from the fire station. It was so cute because they were walking off and then uh, ex-military turned back around and gave Cap like this really like cool hug, like brotherly hug. It was really, really awesome. Like that scene had me a little bit teary-eyed. I was like, oh. yeah. So <laughs> so it was really, really cute. And I loved how everybody just chipped in and helped him out for the day, you know, until the aunt got there and was able to like pick him up and keep him. So it was really cool. So uh, we pan back to Maddie and, and they're actually, they're home from work, like her and Buck, they're home from work. They're still inside Abby's apartment or whatever. And Maddie is telling Buck that she's gonna move. She found the apartment, I think it's like 10 minutes away from where Buck is at now. So Buck is a little skeptical and he's a little upset, but Maddie is telling him that, you know, she did you know she didn't know where her life was gonna go you know once she left the ex-husband and stuff like that but you know but kind of like gave her a push in the right direction and she want to be like back on her own again and stuff like that so he's a little upset but i think it was um i had rolled down i think yeah i, I think it was like buck uh was feeling a little bit lonely because abby isn't there and um you know, he talks to it, not on the phone, but actually by like Instagram or whatever. And I think he's just feeling lonely. And then I think he was just kind of like blown away that the sister told him that she was moving because it's like, you know, so I think he doesn't like this feeling of being by himself anymore. So that was something else. So, um, then we pan to Chim. He's actually uh, at the hospital because uh, during the first season, if you have not watched it, during the first season, Chimp had this really bad accident with his damn pipe had went through his head. It's, 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 it's kind of crazy. And he survives. So he actually goes through these daily, uh, not daily, but these, uh, these checkups where he has to just check and make sure that, you know, there's no further back he doesn't have any brain damage at all but you know he just goes through these uh, regular checkups just to make sure there's no brain damage that's going to come um anything like that so while he's at the hospital he actually runs into his ex-girlfriend who was a major bitch in the first season <laughs> she was a bitch and she was actually the reason why he ended up having that accident but he runs into her and to say it was awkward, that shit was awkward. Because now she's like pregnant and she's like this happy, like in this happy space. And Chim is just sitting there looking at her like, bitch, I'm like kind of stuck. And you pregnant in a relationship and you're happy. And he just, he just didn't know how to handle it when he saw her. So we pan to the scene where Maddie is get, gets this call at the 911 center. And, um someone tells her that someone is stuck inside of the atm machine but it was funny because before the call comes in we get to see where everybody is going into the ATM atm machine to get their money so the first girl should get some money and what the guy is doing as people is, are taking money out of the machine on their receipts when the receipt come out you know if you ask for one he's writing on there like help i'm stuck so the first girl didn't pay attention she had her earbuds in and she didn't hear him calling help or whatever so she just takes the receipt throw it in takes her cash take the receipt and go this guy comes in there he gets his money he sees the receipts he hears somebody yelling but he's being like he, he was an asshole and he walks out or whatever so finally this lady comes in there and she is the one that actually calls maddie uh calls the 911 and gets maddie and tells him that the guy's stuck inside of the atm machine so while uh, the team is there um getting a guy out buck is talking to cap about his sister moving in Abby. And he's going on and on about how he feels the way about the sister moving, how he thought she just, you know, it's too soon for her to move and stuff. And then he goes and talking about Abby, like how him and Abby talk, but they don't really like talking on the phone. They talk more like Instagram and stuff like that. And 
like I said, Buck is feeling lonely. He's also feeling like frustrated and stuck because he's like, you know, I don't know what to do anymore. You know what I mean? I'm like in this apartment. I'm waiting on her to come back. I love her. I don't want to rush her to come back. I want her to be happy and stuff like that. But now I'm like, I'm sitting here and I'm like, what am I going to do? And then you have uh, Chim, he's talking to Henrietta about his ex. And he's going on and on about how he felt a certain way running into her. Like, she's, like I said, like, she's moved on with her life. She's, you know, she's engaged and she's pregnant. And she, she has this happy life now. Here I am, stuck. And Henrietta's is trying to like trying to tell him like you, you're alive, you survived this horrible ass accident. You, you know you're good, you're fine, but he's feeling stuck as well. So um, we pan to this dude in this mall, and he's going inside this uh, jewelry store, and he asks this lady for a box. And he what he's gonna do is actually propose to his girlfriend or whatever. So when he's coming up the damn escalator. And he gets down on his knees and he's proposing to her as he come up the goddamn escalator and child, he fell through. Like the escalator gave away and he fell through. I, when that happened, I was like, hmm. like I was literally like, what the fuck? Like he fell right on through and the girl, she just started screaming or whatever. So, um... We pan back to the fire station, and like I said, Chen was feeling away. The um, no, no, let me go back. Sorry. So we the the guys show up to the mall, and Chen is the one that actually jumps down there, and he sees that like the conveyor, like the machine that moves the conveyor. You know the conveyor. Uh, man, let me tell you something. When I go to work. Tomorrow, I'm walking up the goddamn stairs. I am not getting on the escalator after seeing that shit. Um, <laughs> I'm walking up and down the stairs. I'm not doing it anymore because that freaked me out. Just to see that it can just give away like that. Oh, oh no, 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 ma'am. And it was just like they were working on it the night before, and I guess they didn't like tighten the stairs the way the stairs were supposed to be tightened. Yeah, nope, 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 nope. So anyway, like I said, you see like the machine that makes the belt go up, you know, up and down or whatever. It's actually like uh, like in the middle of dude's back or whatever and stuff like that. So Chen is actually one that like cuts him out and they pull him. Child, they pull the guy out and they're like trying to like, and the girlfriend was like, I know she was like hysterical on the set, but she was getting on my goddamn nerves. She kept running towards, um, then when they were like trying to do their job or whatever, Buck was not doing a good job of keeping her where she was. But anyway, so they pull him out or whatever, and they, they, you know he he's okay at this point or whatever. And he asks like, did she say yes? And Chen looks at him. He's like, yeah, she said yes or whatever. So then all of a sudden the guy started having like these breathing problems or whatever, and basically dude does not make it. It was just really really sad. So they get back to the fire station, and like I said, Chen was feeling away after seeing the ex-girlfriend. So he's sitting up there, and he has like the bloody T-shirt in his hand, you know, from the dude or whatever. And Cat comes over there, and he was like, you, you know, he's talking to him. And like I said, Chen, he he was telling Cat that basically, like he he was telling everybody that he didn't remember anything about the night of the accident. And I guess it was because of the situation that surrounded the accident, you know, him and the ex, and then seeing her at the at the hospital and, you know, with her in this happy space, he was still feeling, like, kind of stuck because he was telling Kat, like, you know, she's in this, in this happy space right now. And me, myself, I had this life-altered, alternating uh, event, you know, where I could have died and I survived and nothing happened. I'm, like, stuck. I don't know what to do with myself. And Kat just pretty much tells him, like, you're stuck because you keep remembering that you're not talking about that night. You remember it. You're going home. You're staying up. You know, you, you can't sleep because you're remembering that night and how it all happened and stuff, but you're not talking to anybody about it. You have to get it you have to let you have to let it go in order for you to move on and stuff like that. So that's basically what he'll tell him. And I understood Chim wholeheartedly. I understand seeing somebody and seeing them like, 
you know, good and in a happy place and you're just here. You're just up. You know what I mean? So I'm glad that Kat told him that, you know, you have to you have to get it out. You have to confront that, you know, if you have to confront her and, and let her know what your feelings are and stuff like that. You just have to talk to somebody, get it out of you, let it go and move on. So um then um we pan to uh, Buck and ex-military. They're actually inside of uh, Abby's apartment or whatever. And he tells ex-military that he has somebody for him to meet or whatever. And um, ex-military is like, please don't tell me you hooked me up or whatever. Because I ain't trying to get hooked up with nobody. Why with his old gorgeous ass stuff or whatever. So Buck is like, no, no, no. It's not anything, you know, it's not anything like that or whatever. So anyway... So the door rang, the doorbell rang, and Buck goes answer it, and I automatically knew it was the nurse, the black nurse from the first season um, that took care, that helped take care, take care of uh, Abby's mom uh, when she, you know, when she was sick and had all Thomas and stuff like that. So she comes in, and basically, um, Buck kind of like hooks her up to help uh, ex-military out with his son and the paperwork you know to get the services and stuff that the son uh that the son needs so i knew buck was gonna uh was going to um help uh ex-military out somehow some way i just knew i think he just had to like think about how he was going to do it so that was really really cute so we pay in a chimp uh he actually meets up with the ex-girlfriend and he tells her um, she thought he was kind of like gonna like cuss her out or whatever, you know, about the way he ended the relationship and stuff like that. But he pretty much tells her that he was he's kind of like happy that you know she ended the relationship the way that did they that she did because it would not have been good for either her or him if they would have kept pretending to have you know to go on with that relationship or whatever. So they. You know they confront each other not confront each other but you know they get that he gets his feelings out there about you know how he felt about everything and i guess they're in this good space now so that was that was a cute thing so then we pan to athena and cat in bed i was like oh my god like they're so cute ebony and ivory going on up in there but um anyway so <laughs> so cat turns over to athena because he's like i see you can't sleep or whatever so she pretty much turns down the position and cat is really like the only one that kind of like gets how she feel athena is very happy with being out on the street seeing what's going on in the street she likes that you know being out and like like just being she likes being a I won't say a beat cop but you know she likes being the police officer that's out there you know as she says she likes to see things with her eyes and stuff like that you know it's better than being a you know she didn't want to be like you know this desk cop or whatever so Cap tells he perfectly on the stance because that's why he became a firefighter because he didn't want to be a paper pusher or anything like that. You know what I mean? So he got it and Athena doesn't um, take the position. She's actually going to stay um, a street cop. So we have that. So we, uh, we pan back to Buckley and he's helping his sister move out and stuff like that and then we pan to him where he's in the apartment by himself and I had wrote down well what you gonna do Buck because now his sister's gone we're not sure if Abby's going to be coming back and um yeah I don't know wish she just might because I found out from watching American Horror Story that the woman that plays Abby on 911 actually played on American Horror Story. Uh, was it? What the fuck was it? It wasn't Covenant. It was the other one. It was the other one that we found out that Michael was the Antichrist. Murder House. So 
maybe she's not on 911 because she's going to be on this season of American Horror Story. So, yeah, we shall see. So that is the it. That is it for 911. My recap. I hope you enjoyed it, and I have to go prepare myself for this new moon. And um, until the next one, later days, guys. Bye.